You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcasts on Netroots Radio or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at that website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for the week of August 2nd, 2024. It's not safe for work. This is recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where what happens in Chicago doesn't stay in Chicago. It's the professional lab with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Oh, my, my, my. Uh, a big tip of the bucket hat to my dad, also known lovingly as Grumps. Hey, Grumps. Hey, Grumps. For, uh, posing the most salient question to ask after Trump's Chicago shit show. Yeah. When did Trump start identifying as orange? Or is he really orange trying to pass as pasty white? Because that's a possibility. But we don't know. We don't know. Who knows? Is he even from here? Or was he born in some other country? From Lumpaland. Lumpaland? There's no such place. Excuse me, Mr. Dear Wonka, I am a teacher of geography. Oh, well, then you know all about it. And what a terrible country it is. Nothing but desolate wastes and fierce beasts. And the poor little Lumpa Lumpas were so small and helpless, they would get gobbled up right and left. When did he switch? And like many of the criminally insane, subconsciously, does he actually want to get caught? I hope they now go and take a look at the oranges, the oranges of the uh, uh, investigation. Yeah, apparently yesterday, my former hometown of Chicago, sweet home Chicago, love that city, was the site of quite the shit show. This is a deep cut from Chicago Sun-Times columnist, a film critic and friend of the pod. We have followed each other on Twitter, I believe. Richard Roper, quote, I haven't seen such a controversy at an event at the Hilton in Chicago since Dr. Richard Kimball confronted Dr. Charles Nichols about switching the samples back in 1993, unquote. He falsified his research so that our DU-90 could be approved and Devlin McGregor could give you Provasic. And this in the aggregate is, is a bunch of, when bunched together, is what almost every major news outlet was writing about this morning. Trump questioned Kamala Harris's racial identity at the National Association of Black Journalists conference, falsely suggesting that Harris had misled voters about her race. Harris is a daughter of a Jamaican what? You're shaking I'm your head. I'm just rolling my eyes at what, what you're reading. That's all my, I'm doing. <laughs> I, I'm like, and I can't believe it either. I'm just reading this going, I cannot believe now, this is what we're we, doing now. We can see each other on camera. So sometimes if there's something off or if um, one of us is lagging, yeah, we'll we'll wave at one another to say, hold it, hold it, without trying to mar if, the recording. If I'm, if I'm talking about David the, Brooks, she gives me the cut sign. The across <laughs> I give the, him the cut sign. But yeah. I just did the biggest eye roll. And so he's like, what? No, I'm just eye rolling at Donald Trump. That's it. It's just, it's, it's, it's so bad. It's so, it's so cartoonishly ridiculous yeah. at this point. Yeah. And fucking um, racist too. And, oh, it's fucking racist. Up, down, left, right. No question about it. There's no doubt what this is at all, which is what makes the coverage of it so, I don't know, interesting. Anyway, back to the uh, aggregation of headlines and commentary. Um, Harris is the daughter of a Jamaican father and Indian mother, both immigrants to the United States, you know, immigrants that we want in this country. I didn't know she was black until a number of years ago when she happened to turn black. And now she wants to be known as black. Trump said the orange asshole said, so I don't know. Is she Indian or is she black? Later, Trump said she was Indian all the way, but then quote, became a black person. I think somebody should look into that too. So it's more birther shit. Yeah. Uh, Trump also frequently mispronounced Harris's first name. Uh, It's pronounced Madam President. (laughs) Yes, it is. Uh, In addition, Trump berated the black reporter who asked him about his past racist rhetoric, including his insults towards black prosecutors, repeated false claims that Trump was born in Africa and his racist calls for four congresswomen to go back where they came from. You know, remembering stuff, Mm -hmm. which you're not supposed to do around Republicans or they lose their shit. And this is what Trump did. He lost his shit. This is him again. Well, first of all, I don't think I've ever been asked a question in such a horrible manner, Trump said, calling the interview disgraceful. 
and criticizing what he characterized as a rude introduction. The Harris campaign, meanwhile, said, quote, the hostility Donald Trump showed on stage today is the same hostility he has shown throughout his life, throughout his term in office, and throughout his campaign for president. Trump lobbed personal attacks and insults at black journalists in the same way he did throughout his presidency. Trump has already proved he cannot unite America, so he attempts to divide us. Today's tirade is simply a taste of the chaos and division he has, that has been a hallmark of Trump's MAGA rallies this entire campaign, unquote. He was also asked in that opening question about having white nationalist Nick Fuentes as a guest at Mar-a-Lago. <laughs> That's just an irrefutable fact. There's video of it. Nick Fuentes has bragged about it. Yeah. They, they, It was a photo op to go for him to go to Mar-a-Lago and mm-hmm. get the blessing of Trump and vice versa. Mm-hmm. Nick Fuentes, white nationalist. Mm-hmm. And how do you expect black voters to trust you after you have a white nationalist come to your home slash hotel, mm-hmm. illegal home slash hotel? And so he Trump had to distract with the tone of what the interviewer was saying. Now, where did Donald Trump ever get the idea that distracting people by berating people about the tone of their yeah, remarks right. uh, would work? Maybe from the New York Times, the Washington Post, LA mm-hmm. Times, da, da, mm-hmm. da, da, da. yeah. But look, for Trump, all publicity is good publicity. And showing how racist he can be and getting away with it, quote unquote, you know, walking out of there alive. Right. Is exactly how he amps up the ecstasy and racist madness of his base. This is just cotton candy to them. Yeah, this is how. And he has to lock down the racist vote. He has to make sure every racist gets crawls out of the sewer. Yeah, 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 yeah. By the way, Trump and his presidential campaign are broke and desperate. Yep. They just are. They can't pay do paid media. Uh, all they can afford is free media. So getting headlines for being a racist beats nobody talking about him. Right. And because... that feeds into his narcissism as well. Yeah. If he's not on the front page, even if it's bad jur- bad press, mm-hmm. bad press is better than no press. Well, he can rely on the media to... Um, Tone it down, tamp it down, both sides of it as much as humanly possible. Mm-hmm. That's who he's got. That's his. That's the hold card of every Republican for the last forty years. A media that will not call them out for what they're doing in simple Anglo-Saxon words that anyone can understand. Now, as we mentioned on Tuesday's show, this quote from angry staffer. Yeah, crack this up. Got to say it a second time. Quote: The fuck your feelings crowd is currently curled up in the fetal position, sobbing into their Trump flags because we call them weird. Unquote. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Trump found a replacement for weird, racist. Racist, yeah. <laughs> so, but but drift glass. Mm-hmm. I know many words. I have the best words. Best words. So I will just call him a raging racist weird mofo. That's right. <laughs> he's not sending his best words, blue gal. No, he's not. No, no he's not. Uh, he and friend of the pod, Matthew Sheffield, wrote, "Quote: The party of I have sexual fantasies about M and M's insists it's other people who are weird." Yeah. Yeah, and this is from uh, Jesse Waters, you know, the stupid version of uh, Bill O'Reilly on Fox. Quote, when a man votes for a woman, he actually transitions into a woman. That's just science, blue gal. That's just how science works. This is, this is, what, this is who we're up against. Yeah. This, this level of just bone, what I call dead rat stupid, is mm-hmm. what we're up against. And there's millions well, and, of them. And after Tens he said that, he realized that Carrie Lake is running for the Senate. Yeah. And so he he clarified his comments to say Democratic woman. Right. Because of phrenology or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Whatever. It, yeah. it makes no sense. He's just no. hurling crap. Well, and that's what we that's what we understand now about the Republican brain. There is uh-huh. just a a bucket of of refrigerator magnets with insults on it. Right. And it's a madly just grab into the bucket, throw them up against the wall and see what sticks. Yep. Mm -hmm. So there was a very interesting Washington Post article by Monica Hesse, and uh, I owe Carolee a hat tip for bringing this to my attention. Uh, The title of this was called is uh, Weird is the Most Effective Insult Democrats Have Tried. Here's Why. Quote, in the summer of 1946, The Adventures of Superman, a popular radio show for kids, began a story arc called The Clan of. C-L-A-N, of the Fiery Cross. Mm -hmm. 
In it, the Man of Steel takes on a shadowy, xenophobic organization that quite intentionally resembled the Ku Klux Klan. The head of the Klan is an evil manipulator, but the rank and file are presented mostly as dopes. <laughs> In one scene, the Grand Scorpion dismissively refers to his followers as suckers and little nobodies, and it comes out that he's only after their monthly dues. The racism was the tool, not the goal. The money was the goal. Shockingly ahead of the time. Shockingly ahead of the time. Mm -hmm. The storyline was suggested by a man named Stetson Kennedy, who had infiltrated the KKK and approached producers with the idea of using pop culture to humiliate the organization. Apparently it worked. And, you know, we're going to see this again in media mm -hmm. where... People make fun of that red hat. Yeah. It's a pow about the power of word choice, which we discussed at length in our Tuesday episode entitled Weird. As you know, between now and Election Day, we're going to do a lot more political podcasts uh, just because the news cycle demands it. Well, just as a side note, I mean, I do listen to old timey radio, as you yes, know. Yes, you do. And The Adventures of Superman is no longer just a program for kids in 1946. No. It no. is a nostalgia program for, uh, I, I never listened to it when I was a kid. It was well before my time. But Superman in the 40s and 50s was hella woke. Yep. yep. Superman was all about unions, yep. all about non discrimination, uh, about, racial equality, uh, racial equality, um, religious equality. Um, not allowing corporations and you know evil political bosses to screw over veterans just because they weren't from this country. Very pro-immigration, which isn't surprising considering that the authors of Superman were Jewish young men uh, in the time of the rise of fascism, right? But right. it was, I mean, I listen to this, I go, I have to just tape this whole thing and play it just for an episode because... God damn. I mean, <laughs> it, it checks every box. There was no there's no trans issues there, but it was very clear which side of the divide um, Superman comes down on. The Man of Steel. I, I went to Brandeis and one of my friends at Brandeis named Mark. Hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. He was just hysterically funny person. Mm -hmm. And right now he would be screaming at me. You mean you're talking about the Jewish media conspiracy? <laughs> <laughs> it started so long ago. So long ago. <laughs> yes. Yep. <laughs> so uh, getting back to Monica Hesse's op-ed, quote, a central pillar of Trump's campaign is the idea that liberals are perverted misfits who want to tear down American values. Married men and women who have children are normal. And of course, the assumption behind all of that is white. White. Um, Mm -hmm. But couples without children or parents without partners or children with two dads or women who have two children, but once had an abortion, those people are morally deficient. Mm -hmm. All of this is old school Puritanism, but Trump brought it all into a pep rally atmosphere. Not only was it morally correct to pass judgment, but it was also festive and fun. They were strong. Libs are weak. They were right. Libs were wrong. They were with the prom king who was telling them they were awesome and the libs are outcasts in the library, probably being read to by a drag queen. Mm -hmm. Down with them, up with us, right? Right. Weird intrudes on that narrative, says Monica Hesse. Mm -hmm. Quote, it doesn't entirely upend it, but it does plant a seed of doubt. What if instead of being admired or feared, they are instead being laughed at? What if instead of edgelords, love that word, Mm -hmm. They are actually just the kids in the corner eating glue off their hands, unquote. And this goes back to our thesis about undecided voters and people who call themselves independent and make up their minds at the last minute who to vote for, mm -hmm. wanting to vote for the cool person yeah. rather than having any sense of policy or party. No. They just don't want to appear to be uncool. Yeah. I want to and, vote the, um, don't vote for the loser. Vote for the cool person. Yeah. You want to vote for That's why there's th these white guys who voted for Obama in 2008. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Trump's a creepy weirdo and his followers are weirdos. Mm -hmm. So uh, calling them that resonates because we have so much evidence. Yes. And again, <laughs> and this is again, a little bit of repetition of our Tuesday show. Um, the, the idea of the tribe that rubs shit in their hair, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um, which mm -hmm. I wrote about, you know, decade ago, 
um, was just a, a fancy way of saying weird. These are people who who are insulated from the rest of society, who only listen to each other, who only watch Fox News and watch hate radio. And so as they rub the proverbial shit in their hair and make giant um, ex uh, exaggerated designs out of the shit in their hair, they impress each other with the weird, long ass conspiracy, mad lib, cylindra, baby eating bullshit that they make up and pass along to each other. And they really think that each other looks handsome and bold. And then they get out in public and people are horrified by them because they have no mirror in that cave. They can't see themselves and they can't see how completely fucked in the head they are. Can I ask you a question while we're going no, off on a kind no, of No, this is a scripted no. show. We have a, I have, I have no, papers to get to. You and I have to. gotten a little frustrated lately um, yes. with uh, Kamala Harris's surrogates. Yes, we have. Especially since yesterday. Yeah, well, one or two of them. call a fucking racist a fucking racist yeah. instead of saying, he's dividing America. Now, I get it that Kamala Harris is being baited. Right. And she doesn't need to take the bait. And she, as candidate, can right. say... Uh, he's he just wants to divide America and I want to bring Americans together. Exactly. That's her job. Right. But for the rest of us, mm -hmm. calling out fucking racism By as, name. Fu as fucking, that is fucking racist. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I know that, you know, knock wood, run outside, turn around three times and spit on the ground <laughs> when, when Kamala Harris wins. Uh -huh. And as an inaugural speech, her speech is going to be about unifying this country. Of course it is. Our post-election speeches need to be, guys, you didn't make liberals cry. You just made liberals win. And laugh. And how fucked up is that for they you? laughed at you all the way laugh. to the White House. Yeah. yeah. You weirdos. And and the thing is, yeah. we still want you to have good health care. And we'd yeah. like you to have clean and, water. And a stable retirement. Yeah. And all access, and we don't want to privatize your Medicare. Oh. And all those awful, awful policies that are designed to hurt you. By the way, Republicans blocked the child care tax credit today mm -hmm. in the Senate. Which not, is... Not pro-family. No. No. The Biden administration lifted record number of children out of poverty. Children. And the Republicans want to push them right push back Push them down. right back down into and poverty. And then blame, I don't know, drag queens for it. Right. Um, and that's just who they are. And our job, I mean, you and I both know uh, we were watching a, a brief moment of cable television last night as we moved on to reruns of Rawhide or whatever we right. were actually watching. <laughs> and we landed on Cory Booker. Yeah. And who was on there going, you know, and he was just, he's just rerunning Obama 2008. You know, this yeah. is so divisive. Why can't we all get together? Why can't I? And I was like, dude, you have so fucking not read the room. Of course, that's his brand. That's uh, how people elect brand. him. And he, I'm sure he's a very point. nice guy. But this is why when I was on the Brad show with you um, a couple of days ago, I volunteered and, and we got to the Veep stakes. Yeah. One of the things I suggested was make me the vice president. Make <laughs> me the vice president. You did say that. I did. Drift because for vice president. <laughs> every president needs their son of a bitch. And I will volunteer to go on the debate stage and carve J.D. Vance up into little couch pieces mm -hmm. um, and call him everything but a child of God to yeah. his fucking face, to his fucking yeah. bearded, eyelinered face, because that's who they are. So while yeah, I mean, Spiro Agnew either eat your heart out if yeah. Drift Glass gets on a debate stage. Why, yeah, and, I, and it'll all be true. And it'll yeah. be salty, and you'll go after the media same way, same I, same as as Agnew I will, did. I will yeah. turn on the fucking moderators. Like, why aren't you yeah. doing this? Isn't this your job? What is your job, by the way? You just sit here and read cards and go home and congratulate yourself on being journalist because that's not being journalist. That's being a, I don't know, cigar store dummy. Mm -hmm. That's being mm -hmm. uh, that's being an automat that feeds out candy if you put in a buck and a quarter what what exactly is your job if it's not fact checking what this lying sack of shit is saying and i'd, and, I'd find out their salaries and let everybody know what those yeah. salaries are too. and that's why yeah. i can't be vice president this is why we um, can't well, put drift glass one up of, there <laughs> one of many reasons jake also, Taffer, you get paid that much to sit there like a lump <laughs> also yeah. illinois is already in the bag so they don't yeah. need me yeah um but this as we were going through the show there were just so many examples of how completely off balance this whole idea of you guys are weird and terrible and weird and, and Donald Trump losing his shit on national television. Um, for example, this is one example of how completely off balance it's knocked the entire Fox universe. Sean Hannity thought it was a great idea to book creepy fascist weirdo, Stephen Miller <laughs> and, and his spray on hair to come on his show and push back on the weird allegations. You know, 
the poster boy for weird. Yeah. <laughs> you know, come out of your cave. Don't worry. Yeah. The sun has gone down. We won't have any garlic or holy water in the studio. And you can talk to us about how accusing us of being vampires is just crazy. <laughs> um, now, one of the fascinating aspects I find of being a, an OG blogger, and I know that you agree with me on this, and the proprietors of one of the oldest, possibly the oldest liberal podcast in America, Blue Gal, mm -hmm. in America. I think we are. Going on 15 are. years. I know we got yeah. most people beat by about a solid decade. It's hearing our ideas and our vocabulary and the ideas and vocabulary that we exchange with our listeners eventually kind of bubbling up to the surface and being echoed by other players with much bigger platforms. Like, for example, just this morning. We are fighting evil. Evil for whom reality and justice and even their own past versions of themselves do not exist if they are inconvenient at the present moment. Yeah, or recognize this. that voice. Yeah. Do you recognize Keith Olbermann? This is your life. Yeah. Um, or this from David Simon. And yes, it's that David Simon I'm about to quote. Quote, what is notable in reading most of the mainstream journalism's coverage of Trump's utter meltdown at... NABJ is that most reporters and editors are incapable of and mortified by the task of calling overt raw racism what it is. Mm -hmm. They can attribute the claim to others, but dare not hear it with their own ears and then say so, unquote. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. boys and girls, as you all know, the tone police never sleep. They mm -hmm. will come crashing down on you like a ton of bricks if you step out of line and start calling Republicans by their real name. It's like Rumpelstiltskin. You yeah. know, once you call something by its true name, you have power over it. And it's really important to the mainstream press that we not call Republicans by their true name, because then we'll, they, we'll have a hook on them. Then we'll be able to control them. Then we'll be able to, to define them and point at people and say, they're weird. They're racist. They're monsters. They're stupid, but they're mostly just fucking weird. Now, speaking of the timidity of the mainstream press, the other time, on the Brad show, not the other time, but when I was asked also about the Veep, said, it can't be you, Drift Glass. Who else would it be? I told him, look, I won't know what to think about who the vice president uh, should be until Aaron Sorkin tells me what to think in the New York Times, because that's how my brain operates. That's just how we go. <laughs> until Aaron Sorkin or George Clooney gets their free page in the New York Times to tell everybody else what they should be thinking and how they should be panicking, how am I supposed to know what to think? Which is just an example of the, of the incredible frivolousness and, and and trivia and surface nonsense that preoccupies major American newspapers instead of doing actual fucking journalism and talking to the using their op-ed pages to tell the truth about what people are seeing with their own eyes. Yeah. If they dug any deeper, they'd have to say racist. Yeah. Well, and, and that reminds me, Drift Glass, have you noticed that the party's biggest coastal celebrities, pundits and podcasts seem to have no fucking idea what the average Democrat thinks about anything i have they never that, talked to democrats no they really don't they don't seem to no this hysterical public overreaction by people like george clooney in the new york fucking times and aaron sorkin in the new york fucking times and rob reiner and the pod save boys and the bulwark crowd all felt it was perfectly appropriate to use their huge megaphones to amplify their own personal massive freakouts. Mm -hmm. Joe Biden was an ego monster who was going to destroy us all. And Jill Biden was basically Lady Macbeth. We needed to have a speed dating mini convention or an open primary or Thunderdome presided over by Oprah and Michelle Obama. And you know what? That, that coded as anybody but Kamala Harris. Right. Oh, yeah. No, it was clearly let's bypass Kamala Harris. Yeah. And we warned you. Mm -hmm. And and K Hive warned you and a whole bunch of people on Twitter who know better than these folks, you bypass Kamala Harris and it's over. Right. Sorry, white dudes with power. Yeah, white dudes. Mm -hmm. no, mm -hmm. Not going to happen. And as I said to Brad yesterday, you know, the purpose of the Democratic Party at this moment in time is to defeat Donald Trump. Yes, period. And all of the enthusiasm for Kamala Harris is terrific. Mm -hmm. And she's cool. Yes. And that's great. That's a good thing. That's when a did good that stop, thing. When did that stop being a good thing? That doesn't, that never stops being a good thing. Mm -hmm. But all of us are also, you know, chewing gum at the same time. And the gum is defeat Donald Trump. Yeah. And keep that monster 
and his party of fascists out of office. We understand the assignment. Okay. Yes. And, and the thing is, I don't think they think we know that. I think they think yeah. they have to tell us what to think because we're too stupid to understand that, you know, and at the end of every sentence or every paragraph or every one of these articles or every one of the Snyder markets, like, don't you realize democracy is at stake? Yeah. Hey, fucko, I've been out here for 20 years saying that. Where were you? Yeah. Where were you during all the time when, that, that the Republican Party was sliding down the road to fascism? A villa in Italy. That's yeah. where they were. Yes. yes. So yes. welcome to my world. You don't mm -hmm. need to tell us that democracy is at stake. We've been trying to tell you that for a very long time. So welcome Donald to the party, Trump pal. Donald Trump tried to take away our health insurance. We right. would have been uninsured. We get it. Had Mitch Believe. McConnell and Donald Trump succeeded. And as you know, we speak for all average Democrats and liberals everywhere, everywhere throughout, throughout all, all space time, time, space, and dimension. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and also, well, you know, Christ Almighty. Oh, well, did, did their mothers ever teach them a difference between public and private behavior? No. The idea that they not. had to put in an op ed and nail themselves to a cross to be, you know, correct. There is a deep importance of not panicking when things go wrong in <laughs> politics. Yeah. Calmly steering into the spin instead of grabbing the steering wheel and screaming, we're all going to die. We have no brakes. Oh, my God. Yeah. Not helping. Not helping yeah. at all. Speaking of the media, friend of the pod, Jay Rosen, asks us to compare and contrast these headlines <laughs> from yesterday, Drift Glass. These are Listen about carefully. Trump's shit show, okay? See if you can distinguish the ones that we approve of from the and ones I we edit, don't. I edit headlines for a living. Yeah. So, and it's hard. Headlines are hard. I will tell you. Headlines are hard to do. Um, you have so many different demands on you. One is SEO. One is getting the meaning without preventing people from clicking through. Um, you know, I guess that's the same thing as SEO, but you really, you really have to know how to put enough there to interest people. And well, these headlines, that, most of these headlines are just terrible because well, they don't why, say what happened. That's why all the headlines at the drift class blog begin with edible chocolate blowjobs. Yeah. And, <laughs> I know that's know. one of your, your tags. And that's what, <laughs> that's what the people want. So what can I do? <laughs> I'm just one man. <laughs> All right. Uh, the Guardian had a fairly good one. Trump repeats lies and attacks Kamala Harris's racial identity at panel of black journalists. Okay. Okay. Let's go to the other end of the spectrum. Washington Post. Harris faces a pivotal moment as Trump questions her identity. Yeah. What's wrong with this the headline? the biggest victim blaming headline I have ever read in my entire life. Yeah. This is this is Kamala Harris's problem. Yeah. This yeah. is her issue. This is action she should take. Yep. Yeah. This is just awful. Just awful. And Washington Post. Fucking yep. Washington Post. WNBC. Trump grabs attention with controversial race remarks. Yeah. Say controversial again, WNBC, you motherfuckers. Say one more controversial time. again. Say it one more time. Go ahead. Say, it one Say more controversial. Time. One Say controversial. Uh -huh. Controversial means that some people liked the remarks and some people didn't. Yeah. Uh, Associated Press, Donald Trump falsely suggests Kamala Harris mid-led voters about her race. Mm -hmm. Again, too many words about Kamala Harris in there and not enough about Donald Trump being a fucking racist. Liar. A lying and a racist liar. liar. Donald Trump is a lying racist, racist liar. Liar. Yeah, that's that's the headline. Trump brings back birtherism. Yeah, there you go. Birther Trump brings back birtherism again because he's out of mm -hmm. ideas. Yes, okay. Uh, Politico uh, went a little um, vibrant here. Trump's first try at pivoting to Harris blows up in his face. But again, nothing about fucking racism. No, no, just pivoting. You know, that's a nice neutral the pivoting, term. Pivoting. The pivot. Yeah. The best one. The, the really accurate one was from Mother Jones. White man tells black journalists that his black opponent is not black. <laughs> yep. That's the one. That's the one. And then that's we the have to add on Wonkette because Wonkette gets it and doesn't have the same, you know, suits upstairs <laughs> that some of these outlets do. Donald Trump yells at black journos for being, quote, horrible, unquote. So that is a new thing he's never done 50 times before. That's not news. That's not news. That's not news. He's a racist. Everybody and knows And a birther. That. 
everybody knows he's a racist birthright. Do we actually have to say it out loud? Everybody knows that. I right? wonder You're if he's going to hire some investigators to go to Hawaii. I hope so. You know, I and they're going to find out things you just wouldn't believe. You wouldn't yes. believe what I'm finding out. You know, like I hired four investigators to go to Sofa City to, to check into the J.D. Vance <laughs> thing. And you would not believe what they're finding out. Okay? Some of those sofas are wearing a blue dress. I know. And some of them are <laughs> ribbed for his pleasure. You know? Oh, yeah. Those corduroy sofas. Yeah, baby. Bow, chicka, you know, bow, bow. Bow, chicka, mm-hmm. bow, wow. Mm-hmm. Um, our friend Steve, and also listener to the podcast, hi, Steve wrote us and said, so the Republican mayor of Mesa, Arizona, the most populated suburb in the United States, endorsed Kamala Harris. This makes me think that Arizona is going to be blue easily. Well, from your mouth to God's ears, uh, Steve, also, uh, you know, don't forget Carrie Lake's on the ballot in Arizona now, as of this week. So uh, Ruben Gallego is going on television to remind everyone that he is not Carrie Lake. And that's that's his whole campaign strategy, and I think it's going to work. Yeah, Carrie Lake is about to remind us that you can, in fact, drown in a desert. Yeah, you know, yeah. if you have a big enough anvil around your neck, you can go right well, down. This and drown was a in Republican primary where forty six percent of the voters said no to Carrie Lake. Yeah. She won in a primary situation that is a hair's breadth. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Well, I have family in Arizona and, you know, friends in Arizona and friends. Who and they did not vote in the Republican them. primary. So. No, they did not. But I, I wish them all well and, and good luck. And, and uh, uh, my brother in Colorado uh, informed me of the uh, fires near his house. Well, oh, within yeah. within striking distance. So oh, our man. prayers are with them. You yeah. know, we are we're aware that we're part of a large continent full of interesting, intricately interla- interrelated people. Yep. And we wish everyone. Uh, safe and easy passage, especially for the next few months. Everybody yeah. calm down and let the drivers drive the car. Uh, this is via Mediaite, and it really does signal how little Donald Trump has control over himself anymore. Nobody can tell him to shut up because he lashed out at Fox News for airing a Kamala Harris rally. Because how dare you show a Kamala Harris rally? Trump said on social media, we have to, and now in all co- all caps, win without Fox. Good luck, man. Good luck with that. Maybe that that's indicates why... that Fox determined his win in 2016. Yeah. Well, that he couldn't know. win without Fox before. Again, he's, he's has he to has lock no down. Staff. He has no staff. He can't afford them. He's yeah. broke. He can't afford a competent election staff. And if no. he did, he wouldn't listen to him because he's no. nuts. No. I, I want to. <laughs> I hope Chris Lasavita and his henchmen got the money up front. Yeah, um, yeah. Now, maybe this is why things are getting uncomfortable over at Fox. Like Neil Cavuto. Remember Neil Cavuto? Yeah. Neil Cavuto spit roasting Senator Foghorn Leghorn Kennedy for name calling. Mm-hmm, now, mm-hmm. in the clip you're about to hear, of course, Cavuto goes both sides because he's still at Fox and still Fox still signs his paycheck. So he still has to make liberals the issue on everything for some reason. Right. But Kennedy was so, so caught so completely on his back foot being challenged on Fox that Kennedy almost lost his fake corn pone accent. The idea that uh, we should have a law that says you can have an abortion at any point, no questions asked, even up until the, the moment of birth. I think for most Americans is a is a a, a moon wing position. That's just my opinion, and all right, but that's uh, also what the just to begin, no, no, you're 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 absolutely you're absolutely fair game to to make it. I'm just wondering how you think that will resonate with women when they, you know she is called nasty and crazy and a ding dong and all and disrespectful between you and the president. What what has been said about her? I'm just wondering, do you worry how that comes across? And maybe you draw no distinction between a female candidate and a male one. Then that's fair game. But that this could 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 hurt you with with female voters with these type of comments. Well, let me let me say it again. Uh, The vice president is a candidate for president of the United States. I don't care about her gender, Neil. Maybe you do, but I don't. I don't care about her race. I care about her. Then why call her a ding dong? Then why call her a ding dong? I'm telling you what the polling shows. I'm telling you what the polling shows. And it does. And I'll be glad to sit down with you 
and 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 walk yeah, you through please, the polls. Please, please do, because I, I never that, know when it's constructed to call people names. You know, Senator, I just on well, the left or the right. Well, uh, but I'm we'll sorry, we'll but I'm right. sorry if that hurts your feelings. But yeah, you can hear you can hear how angry and stunned Kennedy is just being asked. Don't you think it's a bad idea calling women names? Yeah. I mean, and the, and the clip goes on for quite a bit more, but it's, man, they're just not used to it at all. They can't, like we said on Tuesday, they can't go out in public. They can't yeah. deal with normal people because they this is who they are and they can't get back to even pretending to be normal anymore. That's how deep in they are. Well, and there's a whole lot of Republicans out there who voted for Nikki Haley in the primaries. Yes, they did. And a lot of them are women. And a uh -huh. lot of them are women who are mothers yes, or who had a pregnancy scare yes. or who, knew, who know how medically difficult it is to be pregnant mm -hmm. and who had times in their lives. I, I assure you, dear class, every single woman on this planet has had a time in their life where they were scared that they might be raped. Yes, I can totally All of us. That is a yep. universal thing. Mm-hmm. And I think it was was Margaret Atwood who said, you know, man's number one fear is that a woman will laugh at them and women's number one fear is that a man will murder them. Mm -hmm. That's it's it is just a thing. And that's just a thing. Mm -hmm. if that's in and that is a universal thing in your psyche, um, the abortion issue becomes extraordinarily personal. Yeah. <laughs> Taking away someone's bodily autonomy. You're going to have an emotional reaction to that. Mm -hmm. And. Yeah. So this this uh, name calling women and and there's nobody better at it than Jesse Waters. No, he's he's just a garbage person and he's paid to he was, you know, I predicted that I predicted that he would be the one to replace Tucker Carlson. You because did. There was you... no one in the Fox News stable who was as mean as he was. And well, that's mean, what they stupid, needed. Mean, stupid and smarmy. With a, yep. such a, a punchable face, who just smirked. He had all of the qualities that they needed to replace Tucker mm -hmm. and would do what he was told by the suits upstairs and not get too big for his britches like Tucker did. Well, and at the other end of the uh, broadcast spectrum, we would like to thank the Bradcast for having us on. Yes. Um, and, and there, will, uh, be there will be a link to our appearance in the show notes. I'll make sure yeah. that gets in there. Yeah. Okay. So Two. you can go and get more Drift Glass and Blue Gal yeah. talking about the Veep stakes and stuff. Yeah, and, 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 and we talk a little bit about the dirtbag left, too. We do. We talk a lot about the dirtbag left. <laughs> By the way, uh, since the broadcast is broadcast over radio, yeah, uh, our language is precise and salty, but there are no swears. So. Yeah, we, we, we are able to control ourselves when need be. Well, uh, but this is our show. <laughs> yeah, but and speaking to our coastal elite pundit friends and yeah. celebrities, you see, we understand the difference between speaking in church. And yes. speaking on our podcast, you see, right. when you're out in public, especially at a place like a church, that's when your mom voice goes, be respectful, be kind, hold the door open for the nice old lady, and don't swear. Mm -hmm. Instead of running around with your hair on fire, going, we're all fucked, we're all fucked, which is mm -hmm. what you don't do out in public yeah. when you're running for president. You uh, To quote Stuart Stevens, goddamn, Stuart Stevens had to tell these people, back your guy. Shut yeah, up and back yeah. your guy. Let them figure out what they're going to do. But screaming in public about Lady Macbeth and Biden's ego is yep. doing nobody any favors. You're making it worse. Don't you understand? And they don't because they live in they a little don't. bubble. Right. And Where everyone tells bubble, them yes all the time. Yeah. And everyone tells them how yep. smart they are and how everyone yeah. listens to them, which is evidenced by the fact they tapped Aaron fucking Sorkin. <laughs> to write the op-ed telling us we should run Mitt Romney on Mitt the Romney as a Democrat. Yes, I, right. You know, I will. I'm sure a lot of people will forget that and et cetera, but I'm never going to forget it. I well, want that laminated on the wall. For it. He apologized for it after he got some people telling him no. Yeah. All of a sudden, weird. he heard some voices that were what? not. What? Yeah. They're not worshipful? They're what? Not worshiping me? I I did the West Wing. What do you mean? Yeah. yeah. You all no. shut up. All right. <laughs> Let, let's let's round up some news for these good yeah, people. Yeah, the Bidening does continue, Drift Glass. It, it believe really does. it or not. Uh-huh. Vladimir Putin appears to be dumping his Trump stock. Congresswoman Nancy Mace tweeted this morning. Uh-huh. Biden is MIA. Why is no one talking about it? She's an idiot. The White House, however, quote tweeted her and replied. 
He's been busy. <laughs> and then posted a photo of Biden's own tweet, which says, quote, Today, I stood beside the families of Paul, Evan, Alsu, and Vladimir in the Oval Office as they spoke to their loved ones for the first time since they regained freedom. These families never lost hope, and today they'll each be reunited with the missing piece of their soul. Unquote. Lovely. Lovely. He got them all into the Oval Office so they could talk to their family members who were mm -hmm. released because of his work that he did in the, his basement in Delaware mm -hmm. while he had COVID uh -huh. and while, you know, coastal elites were screaming at him that he was incompetent and shouldn't be president. Yup. This is from the Washington Post. Evan Gerskovich, others freed by Russia in landmark prisoner swap. The United, now listen to this list of countries, the United States, Russia, Germany, and four other company countries swapped at least two dozen people Thursday in the largest prisoner exchange since the height of the Cold War, those released included American journalist Evan Gerskovich, former Marine Paul Whelan, Russian dissidents and others from the United States, Germany, Poland, Slovenia, Norway, Russia, and Belarus. Mm -hmm. Over a dozen are headed home because Joe Biden worked for it with, with other countries. I want to and do it then. And, and what happened then, Drift Glass? <laughs> well, I want to do a quick addenda from Scary Lawyer Guy, if you don't yeah. mind. Um, on social media, this just dropped into my lap today, so I'm going to read it verbatim. This is Scary Lawyer Guy saying, in case you want to know what putting country first looks like, mm -hmm. I know we're all huffing the Harris Hopium right now, but I will never get over how the media treated Biden. Just an absolute fucking disgrace. And this is what he's referring to. President Biden about an hour before he notified the world he was dropping out of the presidential race on July 21st, called the prime minister of Slovenia, whose country was contributing two convicted Russian spies to the swap to secure the pardon necessary for the deal to proceed. CIA director William Burns traveled to Turkey last week to meet his counterpart there and finalize the logistics for the swap because he was busy being president. And he had covid even as and people were screaming he's with even, this bullshit. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, this is just country first. This is just straight this up country it. first. That's it. Straight up. Meanwhile, what does Donald Trump have to say about all this? This is also from the Washington Post. Trump says hostage deal sets bad precedent. Former President Donald Trump criticized the U.S. deal for the hostages, saying it set a bad precedent in a post on Truth Social. Trump portrays himself as a master negotiator despite little evidence to that effect. No, Trump would have traded all of our country for one prisoner. Trump yep. plans to sell us all out to Russia, not a prisoner exchange, making us prisoners of Vladimir Putin's regime. That's his plan. And that's his plan for money, power, and getting away with all the crimes he has already committed and plans to commit in the future. So fuck that guy. Don't forget that Donald Trump paid $2 million to North Korea to cover its care of mm -hmm. Otto Warmbier. Yeah. And then Otto Warmbier came home and died. Yep. So this crap from him trying be, and and don't forget too, he's the one that said I, only I can can get this person home. Only right. I can get the Wall Street Journal reporter home. As soon as I'm elected, Biden or um, Putin will will release him. That's the key. Is me. Me. Only I can do it. Only yeah. I can do it. Mm -hmm. Turns out not. This is the same guy who. Uh, Wanted to invite the Taliban to uh, Camp yes, David, isn't to that Camp right? Camp David, right? And arrange for the United States to surrender to the Taliban mm -hmm. and ask them what mm -hmm. their terms were, and yeah. basically signed the Afghan withdrawal deal that Biden was stuck with when he walked in the door. Mm -hmm. that's, that's that guy, right? Same guy. Yeah. Same guy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, one word drift. That's Helsinki. From CNBC, the United Auto Workers on Wednesday endorsed Pre Vice President Kamala Harris over Republican presidential nominee and former President Donald Trump. The union's endorsement should not be surprising. UAW President Sean Fain sounds Irish to me, Drift Glass. A little, little bit Irish around the edges, yep. yep. Uh, has been outspoken against Trump. The Detroit Union also has historically supported Democrats, including President Joe Biden. Fain's criticism of Trump continued when endorsing <laughs> Harris. Really? <laughs> Quote, our job in this election is to defeat Donald Trump. 
So he also understands the assignment. He does. He does. Hmm. And elect Kamala Harris to build on her proven track record of delivering for the working class, Fain said in a statement. We can put a billionaire back in office who stands against everything our union stands for, or we can elect Kamala Harris who will stand shoulder to shoulder with us in our war on corporate greed. Yeah. Unquote. Yeah. Joe Biden has been great for unions, great for labor, great for infrastructure, great for for uh, for building things and getting things off the ground and chip manufacturing and et cetera, et cetera. He also signed an executive order protecting the pensions of 700,000 Teamsters and affirming that to quote David Simon that, yes, that David Simon, we're quoting him again, quote, Teamsters president and special guest at the RNC, Sean O'Brien, is a soulless, craven, backstabbing mook, unquote. And and he should step down. Trump should yes. step down and uh, the, the Teamsters O'Brien president who should step down. You know, appeared at the RNC and appraised Trump mm-hmm. should quit. Should quit. Well, everybody should quit. From and USA should be Today, <laughs> from USA Today, Congress voted, the Republican House voted mm-hmm. against finding a cure for cancer just to block a win for Biden. Yeah. Some Republicans refusing to give President Joe Biden a win voted against the renewal of funding for cancer research. Yeah. And you remember the Obama administration when this is what they did every fucking day? Yeah. Yeah. No, of course not, because that happened in the before time, and we're not allowed to talk about that. This is from the Shoot the Messenger file. Uh, the Trump campaign has forced the architect... I'm sorry. Funny. The Trump campaign has forced the architect of the Heritage Foundation's Project 2025 to resign because people read it mm-hmm. and were freaked out by it. And so now Trump has to pretend he'd never heard of these people. He's and, really and he's doing... punishing someone for, for thinking it, for putting it on paper. Yes. He's, he's doing his own... Bush off machine thing. Like, yeah. uh, I never heard erase, of the Harris Foundation. Yes, I don't know who right. Leaving are. I have no idea who this man is. Pretty soon he's going to say, J.D. Vance who? Never met the man. Have yeah. no idea who yep. you're talking about. Yep. Speaking of refrigerator magnet poetry, Drift Glass, <laughs> yeah, from yeah. Media Matters for America, Kamala Harris continues to be the target of far right lines of attack. Lines, plural, which make no sense. Charlie Kirk said she, quote, seeks to kidnap children via the trans agenda, unquote. Yeah. Something he described as, quote, pure, unadulterated Marxism. Sure. Marxism unquote. is a, You know what? Because Marxism is a scary word. And trans is a scary word. And kidnapping children, that's a, those are scary words. So if we that's, string them together. Those are bad things. Those are all bad things. Yeah. If, we, if we, like like popcorn on a thread around a Christmas tree, yeah. if you just string them all together, They'll keep the idiots in line because there are 60 million people in this country who are just fucking stupid enough to believe that this is meaningful and is an actual yeah, thing. Yeah, and that what, what Kamala Harris has time to do right now is seek to kidnap children to further the trans agenda. Look, kidnapping children is Hunter Biden's laptop's job. Ah, everyone yes, knows that. In, in partnership with Solyndra, everyone Solyndra. knows this. Yeah. Yes. You put yes. on a tan suit, you refuse to wear a, a, tie, a, a flag pin. <laughs> And that's how you, and you go to the pizza place with no basement. And in Benghazi. Basement in Benghazi. Seriously, this bucket of bullshit, this, mm-hmm. this incoherent bucket of word salad bullshit is the Republican brain. It really is who they are, which is why they're so fucking weird. But you can't have a conversation with them without them sounding insane. Um, speaking of insane people who believe insane things, Elon Musk, who owns a, a social media platform, I understand, and some other companies, posted a video Monday that supposedly showed people stealing ballot boxes in Venezuela. The theft of the ballot boxes in Venezuela is very bad. But it actually showed people stealing air conditioner units. Oh, I guess facts really don't matter to a person who designs spacecraft and whatnot. <laughs> I hope I hope he gets some help before he kills himself from, with whatever he's taking. Whatever taking. the hell he's taking. Licking toes. And yeah. by the way, he doesn't design spacecraft. He hires people who do yeah. that. He has no ability to do anything. And then takes like the credit. Sure. A uh, little bit late, but still awesome from WBTV News. Quote, dozens of people who attended Wednesday's Trump rally in Charlotte were stranded after their vehicles were towed from a nearby Dunkin' Donuts. The driver said the store manager gave them permission to park there, but now they're having to pay hundreds of dollars to get their cars back, unquote. And we had hat tip the, li- the uh, alert listener who sent us this story. Yeah, and uh, I'll do my best, Paul Harvey. Are you ready for the rest of the story? 
I'm ready for um, the rest of the story, Drift Glass. Here's the most excellent follow-up from a guy named Carlos Turnbull, who is the owner of that Duncan franchise. Quote, I'm the owner of that Duncan franchise. And while it's true that my manager did give permission for people to park there, they also said they'd buy some donuts that would only be there for an hour. Once I figured out what was going on, I had them all towed because I hate Trump. Unquote. <laughs> Look, go buy all of your donut stuff from Carlos Turnbull. In right Charlotte. Now. In, in Charlotte. Charlotte. Yes. Even if you have to drive 500 miles, it's worth it. I understand there's <laughs> ample parking, so you can do that. you've got that going for you. And honestly... And, and these Trumpers lied to him. Yeah. American hero. Carlos Turnbull. American hero. 43% of Americans approve of the way the Supreme Court is doing its job because they don't know shit. Right. 52% disapproval rate of the Supreme yeah. Court. Yeah. Um. I'm going to try to read through this without laughing, but it's going to be a little bit hard. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Donald Trump repeated his assertion that if Christians, quote, vote for me, you're not going to have to do it ever again. It's true. Unquote. When Fox News's Ava Brown knows, Laura Ingram desperately tried to lure Grandpa Trump down any of the many off ramps she offered, saying, quote, you mean you don't have to vote for you because you'll have four years in office, right? <laughs> Trump cut her off and said, fuck you. Don't worry about the future. The future is dead to me. You have you have to vote on November 5th. After that, you don't have to worry about voting anymore. I don't care because we're going to fix it. The country will be fixed and we won't even need your vote anymore because, frankly, we will have such love. If you don't want to vote anymore, that's okay. That's insane. That's him. Ingram, what he's really talking about is I'll be able to stay out of prison. I'll be out of stable prison and I will fuck this country up so badly. Absolutely. I will anymore. fuck up our elections so badly that no one will ever vote again. And Laura yes. Ingram is making that face like, you know, you can't say this out loud. Right. You know, this is going out over the television airwaves, right? Trump doesn't care. Fuck you. No, no you would never have to vote again. Christians, no. I love you so much. I'm not a Christian myself. I sin all the time, but and it's, it's madness. It's just, there's no other word for it except, of course, weird. It's weird and it's madness. Laura Trump, Drift Glass, the Republican yeah. National Committee co-chair and Trump's daughter-in-law and one of the primary grifters in yeah. this whole outfit, obviously, yeah. decided to open her pie hole and compare Kamala Harris to a designer handbag made to look like a trash bag. The comment echoes Trump's insult last week that Harris is real garbage. Yeah. That's uh, all they got. That's all I got. Well, they're, they're, as I've said many times, and please take a note of this. Mm -hmm. They are bankrupting the Republican National Committee, and they don't yes, they care are. because yes, there'll are. be another Peter Thiel, you know, billion dollars come in for the next Republican who promises to cut taxes for billionaires. Yeah. But the Republican infrastructure is going to be bankrupt in January. There will be a fire sale. And there and and the media is going to report on it as if it's news. And I am here on August 1st, 2024, telling you, it ain't news. When we they know put it, up, it right now. When they put it up for sale, I urge J.B. Pritzker to buy it lock, yeah. stock, and barrel. <laughs> um, speaking of bankrupt, both morally and actually, yep. Rudy Giuliani, remember Rudy Giuliani? I do. Has been forced to agree to sell New York City and Florida properties to pay defamed election workers that yeah. he lied about and whose lives he ruined. Mm-hmm. Good yeah. for good for them. Yeah. This is uh, local news from our governor, J.B. Pritzker. You can't have him, but you can move to Illinois and then you can have him for a governor. Quote, Donald Trump is in Chicago today, but where he is isn't the important part. Now, I got to stop there and say that anyone with any name recognition who comes to Chicago, them being in Chicago is the big deal to J.B. Pritzker. Yes. All of the time. So well, the fact that he says Donald Trump being in Chicago isn't the important part got my attention. I, I would have one addendum to that. Yeah. When I worked in the South Loop at a college in the 90s, mm -hmm. at some point people got sick of Bill Clinton visiting Chicago. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because <laughs> The traffic. The traffic just, and he's yeah. there and the security and the people and there's snipers on the roof and big police dogs. And we love the guy. He's he was a wonderful guy. But he came guy, to but Chicago a lot. He did. He yeah. did. And at some point, yeah. and, and the place where he would speak and stay was like a block away from where I worked. So it and was, it was always, a hassle. It was yeah. a hassle. You know, love but the guy. Anyway, but Jesus. J.B. Pritzker saying 
him being in Chicago isn't isn't the important part. I right. went, really? Okay. Yeah. Here's what's important. What's important is remembering that Donald Trump is a racist, a homophobe, a grifter, an adjudicated rapist, and a 34-time convicted felon that is 97 days away from losing to Kamala Harris, unquote. No fair remembering stuff, JB, but good Democrat, job. Democrats messaging. Democrats, Democrats messaging. Messaging. This is messaging from Democrats, from a billionaire Democratic governor in the middle of the country. Our mm -hmm. governor, as a matter of fact. Yes. So, and we love him. He's great. And you can't have him, but you can move to Illinois. We, would we drive that. through the highways and byways of Illinois, and then we point to things and go, hey, look, that looks like infrastructure. Infrastructure. Yeah. And and uh, JB makes sure that the funding gets there, whether it comes from the federal government or it comes from the state government. Yeah. JB makes sure it all gets paid for. And we have a $2 billion rainy day fund here in Illinois now. And you're welcome. Uh, we have got legal weed and abortion. Legal is weed. Not a abortion is not a dirty word in Illinois. So, no. you know. And, and we welcome people from Indiana, Missouri, Iowa. Yeah. Uh, you know, and everywhere else, frankly. Fleeing Gilead. Um, yeah. Fleeing Gilead. Yeah. to come here for health care. Uh, it, there are billboards up at the borders, at the highways where you drive into the state that say, welcome to Illinois where abortion is safe and legal. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Hey, each week we post to our Facebook page and website an internet kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's internet kitty is a beautiful dog named Henry. Henry looks a little tired and hot in this picture, and that's okay. It's August. We understand, Henry. Henry is the grand pup of friend of the pod, zombie rotten McDonald, who got to pet sit Henry and they definitely bonded. Aw. He's a sweet, sweet dog. And of course, Henry eats freshly poured pet food, our fake sponsor, whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store dreck. Your pet will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh my Lord, it's freshly poured. And you can visit Henry. He's a sweet dog. At our Facebook page or website, proleftpod.com. And you can send your internet kitty dog or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com. Or you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We do love hearing from you. We read every email, every letter you send. Mm -hmm. Be aware that if you write to us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service Go, Postal, Unions, letter on the air, unless you say otherwise. We understand that, uh, you know, DeJoy might be on his way out soon. We've been waiting be, a long time for that. That would be DeJoyful, you know. That would be great. It maybe, would be DeJoyful. Maybe Biden's on the phone right now arranging a hostage exchange. You might. You, know? you might. We might find out that, that DeJoy is gone. He's on to Russia. We gave him to Russia in exchange for, <laughs> I don't know. Him to Dark Brandon put him in the package. Right. Just, you know, oops, you got an extra one? Well, keep it, Vlad. Keep it. Okay. <laughs> call, give us a case of vodka. We'll call it square. <laughs> um, you know, we got this thing we like to call our gourmet coffee guidelines. And we really appreciate it if you don't forget our gourmet coffee guidelines. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, you know, we're sitting right here and we're thirsty. So buy one for us. What, is it going to kill you to five bucks? Good God, come on. You got that in your pocket right now, and you know you do. This is not a charity. This is a job. If you can spare five bucks a month, please spare five bucks a month at patreon.com forward slash prolefpod. Please also share our show on social media. That's how people hear about us and being on the broadcast and being on other podcasts, which we do appreciate. And if you have a cast out there, you'd like a couple of guests who can think on their feet and talk real good and can swear or not swear voluntarily, we mm -hmm. can turn it off and on. Give us a call. And if you love this podcast, please get someone else to listen to it. That's how people hear about us. And thank you for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Lou Gal, the Internet Kitties, did try to warn Republicans not to mess with cats and the women who own them. But did they listen? No, they did not. And you know what happened? They put the whammy on them. Let's think about living. Think about living. Let's think about loving. Think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the humping and the popping and the loving, loving, loving. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with the switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2024-25. GGBG Productions.